Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Good morning to all of you, and we welcome you to Holy Name of Jesus Parish as we celebrate the 29th Sunday in the Ordinary, which also for us in our church is Heritage Sunday. Before we begin Holy Mass, let us offer up unto God a prayer, an act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame in my heart the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will go unto the altar of God. To God who gives joy to my soul. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us confess our sins unto God and prepare ourselves that we might be found worthy to participate in this holy sacrifice. And now let us make an examination of our conscience. And now I will offer up the act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and the remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, you will again renew us, and your people will rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, Lord, and grant us your salvation. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Let every person be subordinate to the higher authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been established by God. The Most High rules over the kingdom of men. He can give it to whom he wills. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. 
and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, for you rule over all nations. May we who through baptism are heirs of your kingdom always be worthy of our high calling. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. On this, the 29th Sunday in the Ordinary, we take the first reading from the Old Testament book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed Cyrus, whose right hand I grasp, subduing nations before him and making kings run in his service, opening doors before him and leaving the gates unbarred, for the sake of Jacob, my servant, of Israel, my chosen one, I have called you by your name, giving you a title, though you knew me not. I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God besides me. It is I who arm you, though you know me not, so that toward the rising and the setting of the sun, people might know that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, there is no other. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The graduate. First of all, then, I ask that supplications, prayers, petitions, and thanksgiving be offered for everyone, for kings and for all in authority, that we might lead a quiet and tranquil life in all devotion and dignity. This is good and pleasing to God our Savior, who wills everyone to be saved and to come in knowledge of the truth. The second reading for today is taken from the first letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Thessalonians. Paul, Savannah, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians. In God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, remembering you in our prayers unceasingly calling to mind your work of faith and labor of love and endurance in hope of our Lord Jesus Christ before our God and Father, knowing brothers and sisters loved by God, how you were chosen. For our gospel did not come to you in word alone, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit, which with much conviction, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord's throne is established in heaven. God's royal power rules over all. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, 
that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim this holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory be to you, Lord. The Pharisees went off and plotted how they might entrap Jesus in speech. They sent their disciples to him with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man, and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. And you are not concerned with anyone's opinion, for you do not regard a person's status. Tell us then what is your opinion. Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Knowing their malice, Jesus said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pays the census tax. Then they handed him the Roman coin. He said to them, Whose image is this, and whose inscription? They replied, Caesar's. At that he said to them, Then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. Render unto God those things that belong to God. Words taken from the Gospel of Matthew. Your testimonies are my heritage forever, for they are the joy of my heart. Words taken from Psalm 119 verse 111. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, today in our church, we celebrate not only the 29th Sunday in the ordinary, but we also mark today and celebrate Heritage Sunday, which other denominations do at different times throughout the year. But what do we have in common with others when we speak of the word heritage? Heritage is defined as that which is inherited. To understand our heritage, we must go to our beginnings in the Judeo-Christian world. To understand the importance of this in inheritance. Our heritage rests upon the promise that God made to Abraham as found in Genesis chapter 17 verse 1 and 2 when we read when Abram was 99 years old the Lord appeared to him and said I am God Almighty Walk before me faithfully and be blameless. Then I will make my covenant between me and you, 
and will greatly increase your numbers. This covenant was a promise made by God to bless future generations. For we also read, I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you and the kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant as an ever everlasting covenant between me and you and generations to come. We find that this covenant continued throughout the entire Old Testament. In the book of Deuteronomy, we read, And if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all his commandments that I command unto you, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. Throughout the entire history of the Old Testament, we see that God continued to keep his promise to bless those for whom he called this was the beginning of our inheritance, the beginning of what we know as our heritage. In the New Testament, we are reminded of our Christian heritage. In the first letter of St. Paul, St. Peter the Apostle, we read of this inheritance and this heritage. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you might proclaim the mighty works of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. It was out of love that God chose us to have a very special relationship with him. He gives us meaning and he gives us purpose of life. Jesus, God's only begotten, came throughout his entire ministry to teach of the inheritance. For he speaks in John 15, verse 16, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And in the 10th chapter of the Gospel of John, we know Jesus, who describes himself as the Good Shepherd, I believe that when Jesus said unto Peter and Andrew, James and John and the other apostles, come and follow me, he was not speaking just to them, but he speaks to us this day and reminds us of that which we inherit. In the letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Romans, Paul writes, for you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is the very spirit that bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. We are taught by our Lord that out of love, we are God's children, and we have been imbued with the Holy Spirit. So great a heritage and inheritance. Today, we also speak of another heritage, the heritage of our great American nation, where the thoughts of freedom and democracy were set forth by our founding fathers. In articles such as the Declaration of Independence, and the Constitution. It is in these principles that so many had died so that we could be free. We constantly need to affirm this heritage and we need to cherish and not tarnish the principles which unfortunately we see in today's world taking place. Today we speak of another heritage that among many of our parishioners, the heritage of being Polish. The history, the language, the customs, and the traditions speak volumes of a nation who fought constantly throughout their entire existence 
to be free and to be proud on this Heritage Sunday. It is not only remembering Polish heritage, but we also remember all different ethnic heritage, heritages that brings people together as children of God. Finally, we celebrate today our heritage in being a member of the Polish National Catholic Church. It is a rich heritage given up to us through the efforts and the struggles of our first bishop and organizer of the Polish National Catholic Church, the Most Reverend Franciszek, or Francis Holder. He, along with the early organizers of the church, were persecuted, but it was through their truth, work, and struggle, which is the model of our church, that they pointed a way unto Christ through our devotion to the church. It was through their efforts that today we continue to affirm our heritage. For God did not abandon those who would seek him through his word. For in 1929, this heritage found its way to South Deerfield, where a group of Polish immigrants heard and answered the call to God and built a, and dedicated a church based on their heritage, on their faith, and their love of God. And so on this Heritage Sunday, we have so much to be proud of as we remember the beginning of a promise, a covenant. It began with these words. If we faithfully obey the voice of the Lord our God and carefully fulfill all his commandments that he has given unto us, then we will be blessed by the Lord our God and he will be with us. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Give honor to all. Love the community, fear God, honor the King.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray, O Lord our God. We offer you this sacrifice that the gospel may be established among us, not only in word, but also in power. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God. Forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through his cross and resurrection, he freed us from sin and death and called us to the glory that has made us a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a people set apart. Everywhere we proclaim your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and light, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Zanana in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith, which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. Let us today remember in our prayers the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry and the homeless, the unemployed. Let us remember all those who have suffered with the coronavirus and still do. Let us remember in our prayers this day all abused and neglected children in our world, all those victims of violence both here and abroad, all those who serve in our armed forces both here and abroad. And all here present, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer, or who offer up to you this sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion and honor above all others the memory of Mary. The glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, graciously to accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and to make it pleasing unto yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit 
and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples, and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people at that solemn moment. So sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given to you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future. And by the intercession of his passion, resurrection, and glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offering to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice in the Immaculate Host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. these souls, Lord, and all rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after you their divine master, merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit.
forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future. And by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same, Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be caused from my judgment or condemnation. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness, may become my safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in all of us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. What shall we return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me. I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be safe from all my enemies. May the, body, may the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen.
My son, fear the Lord and the king. Have nothing to do with those who rebel against them, for suddenly arises the destruction they send and the ruin from either one who can measure. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, O Heavenly Father, through the Eucharist we have received. Help us to fulfill our duties to you and to our brothers and sisters. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Go, the sacrifice is offered. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which I have offered, though unworthy, be in the sight of your majesty and acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for myself and for all those for whom I have offered it. Through Christ our Lord, amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten, not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. My dear brothers and sisters, again I thank you for coming and sharing with us this Holy Mass of the Eucharist. It is the prayers of our church that all of you might be blessed, you and your loved ones. May the angels of God watch over you, keep you safe and healthy, and may God be always with you. And now we will conclude with the offering of a final prayer for not only one another, but also in our remembrance for the repose of the souls of all our faithful and departed loved ones. May God be with us until we meet again. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And for the repose of the souls of all our faithful and departed loved ones, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May perpetual light shine upon them. May they all rest in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.